You know what they say, mm-hmm. if you want to make a uh, cake from scratch, you must invent the universe. So, you know, sometimes with these uh, second halves, I like to do a second set of intros. But I do want to, before I do that, address something that you had said, uh, Shep. <laughs> Uh, about having more viewers during the break. I had a show called Okeanos. Before Okeanos, it was rare for my intros to go more than five minutes. Uh, intros were pretty fast, maybe 20 at the most. Okeanos started setting records of like 40, 50, one hour long intros <laughs> to the point where people would show up and would only watch the intro. We'd get up to like 20, 30 viewers And then as soon as the intro was over, it would drop down to like 10 to 15. There were people who only showed up for the podcast and then left once the role-playing game started. So so I feel, I feel you brother. Like it, people are weird and weird shit happens when you throw a break screen up, who knows what could happen. Second, let's talk about an interesting professional moment that we've had during the last week, you know, Maybe all of y'all are working on confidential stuff that you can't share, but perhaps you have one moment, one epiphany, or interesting thing that you did that you can post up here. Maybe even a learnable moment that you can pass along. I mean, I taught uh, Mick how to not be passive-aggressive to players who will clearly not respond to that behavior. (laughs) Mick has learned, you know what? He's gonna see what happens anyway. But Mick is also assuming that in when like they finally play that game oh in like God. months time, he'll forget everything he learned from AD. I mean it's easy. If someone clearly doesn't wanna be there, then oh, no. don't <laughs> they'll stop going. Oh bearded, you're you're so deep, brother. <laughs> Uh, I'll say this one thing that one helpful tip Live. is make note of all your reference because who knows maybe four or five years later that thing that you had reference for that was perfect for a different project that never happened is actually perfect for your current thing that you're working on my goodness so wow. think about that <laughs> Shep, what do you got? Um, yeah I think that's but that's, that's one thing I got nothing. Nothing? Nothing? No learnable moment? No professional achievement? Okay. Bearded, do you do you have anything? You're just holding it together, trying to keep that background from falling? Yep. Okay. Sky's falling, guys. Um I've started to do more freelance recently, so learning how to, you know, interact with a company that you don't currently work for and all the people You do contracting that, work? Yeah. Yep. And all the people that you need to like please and you know get assets to and whatnot so it's definitely been a learning experience to try to uh, navigate all of that for sure but it's fun sometimes you get a really really good company that you just enjoy working for and it just works really smoothly and other times you just get a company where it's just all roadblocks so yeah learning how to manage all that is part of the game just uh if you don't like roadblocks don't work for the federal government yeah. Is Zorn is this your guys' first album right here? Is Zorn <laughs> Road? Oh, look at that. So oh, what I'm looking yeah. at. Can we please make that into a finished piece? <laughs> I'll Full keep working point. on this one. Yeah. With detail. I want to know because uh, I don't you know, know the album. I'll do, I'll do all the pencils up on this one. If so. All right. Color. I'll do the inks on it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, all right. we're turning well, this into a collaborative the... piece. Connor yeah. can do the color. Yeah, that'd be fun. I want to know what the uh, the background is. Is it going to be these these mines, or is it going to be? Oh, that'd be funny. Yeah, I like the yeah. I like the dwarven mural that that AP described there. Oh, that would be a good background. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Super second right through there. Yeah. All right. I mean, sounds like you the guys have a plan. Yeah. I can't wait until I see this final finished work. <laughs> Here it was at the beginning of the show. I was like, here's some, I'm going to start doing better descriptions with more evocativeness. And now you guys are like, oh man, let's draw that thing that he described that evokes things. And I'm like, yes, fucking nailed it. <laughs> That's my professional achievement, ladies and gentlemen. It's not teaching Mick something that he immediately ignored. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, don't don't worry, AP. I know that well. <laughs> well, he he did have a thing where he was like, "I'm being passive aggressive with somebody, but I feel like I should reward them when they did something good." And I'm like, "But if 90% of what they do is bad, don't reward them for the one good thing. You should talk to them and be like, "Hey, man." <laughs> Let's get on the same page. And he's like, no, I think I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. <laughs> the other thing, though, was like how to reward someone who uh, with more than just experience points and not yeah. money. And I was like, favors. You reward people with favors and access. Yeah. So like the character they were talking to when like the interaction I want to reward, I had already like I was going to use that guy as that uh, patron is what they call it. So. The patron himself is the reward, I guess. Instead yeah. Of, yeah. Sometimes when you go to save the princess from the castle, the princess from the castle is the thing that you receive at the end. What? I know. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm uncomfortable with that. That makes me... <laughs> really? You're uncomfortable? That That is a factual thing. That's what thing makes you that... uncomfortable? <laughs> that is physically what happens. When you save a princess from a castle, you then have one princess in your inventory. <laughs> You just put it in her sack. That is that is an indisputable fact. I, I don't mean. know. About, I don't know if we're, she's missing agency here, guys. Uh, I, mean, I mean, her agency is she was captured and now she's free. But not that's not, being in your sack is not free. I, well, look, you're the one that put her in a sack. Okay, I didn't I put her in any sacks. Careful. I, I just said she's on your, in your inventory sheet. Okay. Yeah, isn't that the that's the sack? <laughs> Is that what you call your inventory sheet? The sack? <laughs> I mean, there's more than just a sack on your inventory sheet. You can have pockets. You can have a bag of holding. You can have it strapped to your back. You can be carrying it. You can be juggling it. So that's you can how be I'm letting it walk beside you. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Look, in this scenario, Hal is a princess that you saved from a castle. The castle oh, being right. Apple Valley. Oh, okay, and okay. by save, oh, you oh. just hired him and moved him away, and then abandoned him in a different country. He wasn't abandoned. He was, <laughs> he he was kicked, was, as, kicked aside. He was given a greater purpose. Oh, instead okay. Of helping, you know, oh, God, Mick, have like, you ever oh. considered becoming an evil villain's <laughs> grand vizier? <laughs> he was <laughs> driven to fun. greater purpose. <laughs> Hello, Yago. <laughs> you He's next. Jafar now. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's can't say Grand Vizier without talking about Jafar. Oh, there are many villainous Grand Viziers, good sir, without I mean, Jafar. Name a good Grand Vizier. Uh, there were several within, I believe, several of the far, not far, near Eastern empires. Like the Byzantine. You could have good viziers, okay? I'm sure the Sassanids had several viziers of acceptable level. <laughs> you only hear the bad ones because we associate viziers with evil, kind of like how we associate, you know, empresses with evil or evil queens with Disney. You see Queen on the screen? She's probably evil. Probably. That's true. You want to be a good person? You're a princess. Queen, evil. I guess what we've really learned today is that growing up makes you evil. Yeah, I was going to say, it's just the fact yeah. that you're older. Speaking of evil, let's talk about Kazador and this bear. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That I was pummeling its skull right over, so. and over, so. over and over and over. I feel like this bear should get advantage when it beats Kaz's ass because of that trick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kazador, it's, it's you. What do you want to do? Uh, let me get out my character sheet. Oh, good. Excellent. That's do you a have good a bear thing. fighting skill? <laughs> I took a new feat, guys. You know, you say that, but in a, in a game like Burning Wheel, bear fighting could easily be a skill that you fork into killing bears with. Skills Actually, called bear grills? If I think this thing... <laughs> you know, bear think... grills survived falling 16,000 feet on a non-working parachute, had his spine ruptured, and then got back up and made a TV show about being bear grills. I don't. I don't ever want to fall sixteen thousand feet. I don't even like being in a sixteen thousand foot up air, like airplane. I don't, I don't even like falling five feet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, like I like gravity to keep a nice gentle hold on me at all times. There's this frisbee golf course in Emporia that, like, you don't ever leave the ground. I'm just walking, 
but like it's on these kind of like hills and cliffs and just the open sky of Kansas. And I already have panic attacks and like, I'm not even off the ground. <laughs> the open sky of Kansas. That is an open sky. There are many States around Kansas, so I don't feel like it's that open, but the sky can be open. Yeah. Speaking yeah. about opening things, what's about this bear? <laughs> Kaz right. is still opening his character sheet. Uh, I, I was going to say, if I think it's a fiend, I should have advantage on my attacks. You clearly uh, see it. The what you believe and what actually it is are not the same thing. <laughs> yeah, but but the, the character thinks. In the Just grudge. because you think you have advantage doesn't mean you have advantage. <laughs> well, so Just I because think the I have character advantage. thinks it's a fiend doesn't make it a fiend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, like, the character thinks he has advantage. I mean, you so play. far, you've had, I want to point out, it's still prone. You've had advantage the whole time. <laughs> so as far as you know, you've maximized your fiend fighting skills now. You've unlocked the art of killing fiends somehow. Right. Maybe, maybe it's literally just been years of playing over your nightmares in your mind, and you're like, oh, that hurt that fiend. That's how you do it. You have to hit it that way. And now you're bringing it to bear on this poor bear. Wow. I was going to heal the bear, too. I mean, there's nice no time. time to heal the bear. All right. Uh, seven more points of damage. You want to action surge and hit him again? I think I just used it. Dude, I just this, this is this is a new turn for you. Yeah, but yeah. I, I only have one action surge. Oh, well, then, no, you don't have another one then. Yeah. Also, right. haha, suck it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure you only get one action surge ever. Oh, uh, that doesn't sound right. No, you get more when you level. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. Well, later anyway, I guess. Yep. Not at level four. Um, and then I'm going into a tunnel fighter. At 17th level, you get another action surge. Okay, so it's like, you know, never. <laughs> All right, you go into tunnel fighter. Rick Jax. What you doing? Lights have popped into existence all around you, Rick Jax. Yeah. You walk oh. around the corner. Castor is one, fucking two, this bear. Three, up. <laughs> Castor four. is one handing his warhammer over and over again into this bear that is rolling around gone, on the ground fiend. in pain. <laughs> all right. So um, I moved my five spots and I'll fire my fire bolt at the bear. Um, where is it? Where is it? That's not how you do it, Rich Jacks. You get it in the skull. <laughs> hey, I'm looking. Can a bear laugh? That would be pretty funny. I believe Tasha's hideous laughter must target humanoids, but uh... contrary to popular belief, animals in this game do have feelings. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Luckily, it's only in this game. Uh, it is a creature. And uh, a creature, it has to be an intelligence score four or uh, greater. Sorry, five or greater. Yeah, five or greater. So you have to mm -hmm. guess whether this bear has an intelligence score of five or greater. I'm a sorry, 13 I'm doing my best. Is good enough to hit for eight points of damage. You splash on its face, and its hair just immediately ignites and then gutters out. The bear is like. <laughs> Uh, the bear writes itself and moves on Kazador. It is in a fuck you up mode, Kazador. <laughs> this is the most upset creature you've ever seen. You've cracked its skull. You can see you can see like pieces of its skin are flayed off. Now it's set on fire. The smell now is horrendous. It is truly awful to smell live burning fur. And then it reaches out with claws the size of fucking bananas and a paw the size of your head and goes Rrrr. it's cool you goaded it into this so everything will be fine right right uh well the good news is that the bite doesn't hit the bad news is that the claw hits and that's the real damage here as usual it's like taking a punch from runa but like twice as worse it smacks you in the head for 13 points of damage you feel the claw rake across your armor. Your whole head is shaking from the vibrations of claws just right over your head. Someone rung the Liberty Bell. Yeah. <laughs> Runa, 
you can hear fighting, shouting, slamming, and a bear roaring to life. 10, 15. Oh, shit. 20, 25, 30, 35. You rush into the room. Mortrix um, lights guide you with what little light remains. Yeah, stop. 5, 10, 15, 20. And I'll try to grapple him. You're going to hold Kaz back? Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see here. Let me pull out my good old handy grapple rules. I think I roll athletics. Uh, you know, let me quick search through past grappler for the last instance of grapple. Grappling. The target of your grapple must be uh, you're good. You make a strength athletics checks and Kazador defends with strength athletics or dexterity acrobatics. Fuck. That is a improbably bad roll. That's an eight. Kazador, yeah. how would you like to defend? Athletics or acrobatics? Athletics? Alright. Yeah. Runa <laughs> comes up behind you and gets the hands around you and you're just like <laughs> The fiend must be smited. <laughs> You're in, you're, you're in fiend fighting mode now. You're yes. like, you will not take me! <laughs> Runa, what else do you want to do? Can't really do anything else. Okay. More trick. Yeah. Um, uh, gonna... Some wild shit is going on. Kaz is struggling with Runa. You hear a lot of... And Runa was like, away. stop, Kaz, stop! There's no torch on, right, Runa? That's correct. All right, so I need to move my lights in. I'm just like, what is going on in here? There is, there is bear poop, rat skeletons, piss. How far can I move my lights? Uh, getting... I believe they can move 20 feet. 20? It's getting unbearable in here. So I still can't yeah, see. Yeah, that's right. Good. It's unbearable. Yes. <laughs> okay, so my furthest light was right there. It can move 20 so the furthest I can get a light in here is there. You should have a pretty good view of what's going on, however. Right, almost certainly from that that light position. Um, actually, I can just barely see Kaz here. Yeah, I just want to say in chat, there's Bear Pub Gamer, and she is, of course, rooting for the bear. <laughs> I, I also root for the bear. Mm -hmm. what, what did Kaz do? And then that's it. That's what I'm doing. Very well. Kazador, somehow it has rolled around to be your turn again. <laughs> wow. Remember that one plan we had to like scoot by this thing? <laughs> I don't remember that ever being a plan. Yeah, that wasn't. It wasn't that might have been a plan you had in your head, but I don't think it was ever set no, up. We, we had I talked cast about it. Passed without a trace. We talked about oh, it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, pass us out of trace is long gone. <laughs> it stays for an hour. I mean, it only lasts until you stop bear attacking. <laughs> I, I'm not attacking the bear. Oh, okay, pass without a trace for Kazador is gone. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Runa, get your hands off me. Didn't you know what this kind of thing is? I it's a bear. It. And I'm going to do uh, seven points of damage, huh? Yeah, you smash the bear on the head once again. It slowly stumbles to the ground majestically on its four legs. And then its tongue walls out the side of its mouth as it starts breathing heavily. You've knocked the bear unconscious. Without treatment, it will die very shortly. Would you like I to can, give it a finishing blow, Casador? I, I continue pummeling it until I try and find the bear. Can I stop it's him? It's gone. No. No. You haven't. You. I mean, you tried. <laughs> You're still trying to get your arms around him, and he's still wham. The bear is dead, Casador. The bear is dead. And then I try searching for some kind of evidence of, uh, like Fiend. possession. There is a <laughs> giant pile of poop. Behind it. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to search the body. Like, see sure. if there's anything. There's... Make an arcana check. Okay. I'm going to, like, crouch next to the bear and see. I, I can't really do much at this point. I'm I mean, crushed its head. Cazador, 
who knows how demonic possession would work on an animal. I mean, you're clearly no bear expert since you failed two nature checks in regards <laughs> to the bear. Uh, and the, yeah, I guess. Ones. you're not you're not sure. Suddenly you're like you're you're not sure that it was demonically possessed. Now you're like, there's no brimstone, there's no shadow. Yeah, I don't see and, anything. All right, I don't uh, know. You think maybe you might have made a mistake. <laughs> It's possible. It's possible, but it's dead now, and that's all. Oh, that it's meant. so dead. Very dead. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. So I'm gonna walk over. I'm gonna pat Cas on the show and be like, "You feel good now, big man. You feel tough." I did what I had to do. No, I'm totally on your Kill side. Kill the defenseless defense, animal. The first defenseless animal is always the toughest one. You get super used to it after that. <laughs> I don't even know why I put up with both of you. Tell that to I'll my helmet. Walk the thing, away. The thing ra raked across my head, and, and because you attacked it first. Yeah, I'm just that's saying. That's what enraged it. That's not defenseless. And so I walk over to, uh, um, I don't know. The doors by. I don't even know what to say to that. That's so ass backwards. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I walk over and I'm checking out these doors. So Rick Jacks, so you're rolling investigation to search around the room. I thought you said yeah, but I didn't hear any noise. But you look yeah. like you're also swallowing something. Hey, okay. I mean... All right. As you roam around the room investigating, there's a lot of bear scat. Uh, you think that this bear was probably starving and dying in here. Uh, it looks like it had trouble getting out. There's only one passageway it could exit from. As you move towards the southern door, your investigation, like you are about to step on it when you don't. You stop. There's a depressed tile, and you realize that this southern door right here, there's a trap that will cause the tile, the, the block above the door to fall down in a 10-foot radius and, like, crush everything around it. It would deal enormous damage and, of course, block off the southern door entirely if it went off. Hey, Kaz, there's a trap. We know it's there. Do you want to go over there and set it off? I will draw the trap's ring right here. It's in can this I, area. Can I kneel down and take some of the incense that I have out of my bag and light it in front of the bear? Yes, it immediately smells slightly better. Would you like to perform a Smart. prayer service for the bear? Yeah. All right, make a religion roll. Oh. <laughs> That's a natural one. I'm you just you, you are so enraged you can't even get the the words formed in your mind you were just having so much trouble focusing every no one ever listens to you in this party and they're always killing animals <laughs> <laughs> so i'm looking at uh these doors on the left uh yeah, right. so the northern door on the left has a lock stone door. The lock is on your side. The southern western door is a iron door which has uh, swelled in its frame and is now unable to open. It's too okay. too large. Okay. Rick Jack, so what do you see over there? What uh, You say it's a trap? That's what I see. I'm trying to inspect, see if I can figure out a way to disarm it or set it off. Because I have my mage hand. <laughs> uh, just to be clear, if you set it off, you will block the corridor forever, right? You'll have a, a block that will, a 10 foot large block that now stops and keeps you from moving forward. Yeah, Literally, okay. the whole ceiling just falls down and blocks the passageway. Okay, so yeah, I pass. You can attempt to disarm it using mage hand, of course. If you want to intentionally set it off, that's one thing, right? Yeah, like you can just be like, "Whoop!" It'll fall. Nothing happens. That you know, obviously the block will be there forever. But okay, so Kaz, I think we should try the other door first because this one is trapped, and um, perhaps I can <laughs> okay, disarm turn towards not. Kaz and you just say it's trapped. Yeah, Everyone's like, Kaz is trapped. You're like, Kaz, it is trapped. Kaz, if you want to go first, you be my guest. I'll go first through the other door. Which door? All top, right. Top, top, top. All right. That door is locked on your side, so yeah. you can unlock it easily. Yeah, I unlock it. Okay. Then I open, up, open yep, it up. Yep, yep, yep. Let me give me a minute to uh, <laughs> just make sure give that. Give me a minute. Jeez. 
I'm also keeping up with the uh, map making as we continue to explore. All right. Sorry, just finishing up the reveals. So you'll be able to move forward. And then we've got that thing there. What kind of hallway is this that we see before us? Is it like the other ones? So this one is quite different. Rather than, well, it's different than this particular room. It's not clean. It's it's very dirty. It looks like no one has traversed through here in some time. Uh, this particular one has Dwarven script written along the wall. Uh, since the walls here are 10 feet high, uh, that is quite a lot of script, right? Like a human hand level all the way, all the way down to the bottom from the top on each wall. Okay. Can I try and read some some of what I can see right now? Yeah, make Just... a religion check. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'm on another page. What is your result? Five. These are uh, religious prayers to the god of justice. Uh, I mean, you don't even remember that guy's name. Okay. <laughs> There, there are very detailed speakings um, about the the way that uh, law should be carried out within this cult. So uh, it describes this place as the Shrine of Laos and then lays out a contractual obligation to all who remain here. Uh, and then it it is dense. I mean, we're talking about an informational density of, you know, refer back to sec paragraph three, section one, as to the regards of residents and the placement of their waste bins, right? Like, this is a homeowner's agreement written into the walls of the very foundation. I love it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to step forward and see what's... Okay. Rick Jax, do you want to take point or will I... Oh, yeah, I think I can take point just because I can see further. <clears throat> Ooh, how come I can't move my guy? Here we go. All right, just hang back. Let me take a look. Oh, uh, I'm going to go in stealth mode. Okay. So here comes my room. is still concentrating, so you all have your plus 10. All right. Okay. <clears throat> Rick Jax, as you step forward, uh, you begin seeing these writings there is uh, almost a runic reverence in the way that they're written everything is perfectly spaced uh, in a way that must have taken an incredible amount of time to get correct right you know when you write something in stone it's not like you can just erase it or control z it right that is there forever so they have perfectly everything is like one quarter inch offset from the next one there's a whole inch space between one word and the next each line is perfectly straight it is incredible the level of stonework that you're looking at here as you creep through the corridors uh once more for some reason this court like you've seen this through this whole place before this is not one of those shifted corridors you've seen before right like for some reason, all the dwarven corridors here are serpentine and labyrinth on themselves. It's very odd. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so, obviously, I'm going to try not to be distracted, but I'm super impressed by the stonework because <laughs> deep gnomes, deep gnomes love stonework too. Uh, but let's kind of keep, keep. What do you think, Rick Jax? Have you seen, seen anything like this in Blinden Stone? Well, we, we have some stuff that I would say surpasses it, but it's been a while. I'd like to see that. I'd like yeah. to see that indeed. Well, we'll see. Lingding Stone, last I heard, I don't know. It, it could be completely raised. I don't know. Hmm. But we got a job to do. Let's kind of keep going forward. Uh, I'd like you to make a stone cutting check here real quick, Cazador. Uh, and you might as well make one as well, Rick Jax. Uh, make a history check. Uh, at proficiency. And for you, Cazador, you actually get double proficiency if you already have history. At I don't already have history. Okay. Yes. How do I uh, add proficiency? I just... Uh, just roll it and we'll add your plus two or plus three, whatever it is. Okay. I turned proficiency on, so don't add it on mine. Okay. All right. Yeah, as both of you begin creeping around the corridors, it occurs to you why these hallways are curved like this. Um... 
the stone here has been smooth, but you begin to see places where this is a strike. Like this isn't just stone that they carved through. They were following um, a stone vein and you can see like streaks of red and then a streak of green where they might've got some like mitocline and some iron over here. Like this was a vein and they followed it and then they turned it into the hall home of the Shrine of Laos. So Rictex, you find a corridor that's perfectly straight. Like this could not have been following a strike. This is, someone carved this to be a straight line. Okay. This homeowner's agreement is still on the walls here. I mean, you're looking at incredible informational density, dozens of feet long with 10 foot tall walls one inch sized font hundreds of pages of text are written on the walls around you wow okay so yeah i would talk about it but i'm still trying to be quiet you're like you're like oh this is so cool and kazler's just like i do Clank not want to know <laughs> what what you have to pay in taxes every year to stay here like, <laughs> why do they have a bracketing system why can't they just have a flat tax <laughs> rick Jax, you reach the end of the corridor here and the text suddenly ends as once more you it turns into a strike zone where uh there's like a rainbow sheen of color that has been smoothed over and turned into decoration uh, it seems like the corridor serpentines in itself. Okay. Uh, you are outpacing the rest of your party, however. More trick and runner being left behind. I was just going to suggest uh, if I could do like a sign language to uh, Cazador to, to get the rest of the group that were safe to come. All to right, this show me what the sign language is, because your party has not developed an individual party sign language. Ooh, woo uh, yeah, I mean, I, I know he can see me, I guess, dimly. It's 50 feet. I think he can see me fine, right? So I can, I yes. can see you. Yep. Yep. He yeah. can see 60 feet. So I don't know. I, I probably would just like circle the group, you know, point to where they are, tell them to come in, but be quiet. That's the best I can do right now. That's pretty yeah, good. We should, we should develop the sign language. Yes, yeah, that's I, a really cool thing to do. I go back. All right. Hey guys, we're, we've got a long path down here and uh, we might as well take it out. I think it's, I think there's a shrine to Laos. Did you find some more bears to murder? No bears, thankfully. That's true. I hate for you have to murder another one. I actually don't care. I'm just, I'm just on Runa's side on this. Just, just to be difficult, Kaz. I, I know more trick that you like to be difficult. <laughs> oh my God. So let's go. So I keep going. Uh, you're pulled out of your meditations by the rest of your party talking around you. So what else was in this room? <clears throat> Just the trap door door, right? And the poop. And the poop. And of course the door that's wedged in place and yeah. needs to be forced open. Yeah. I mean, there's also a bear, you know, a, a bear, bear. bear carcass. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to have to be the one to say it, but a skin bear properly tanned it's worth a lot of money i mean not that you guys have leather working equipment but you could sell it to someone if you could get it there quickly i feel like like maybe not maybe not this one okay all right i mean it's your choice i mean i think it's runa's choice i mean runa's choice is a movie that i would watch <laughs> She has to choose between saving an animal or saving a little bit. And she's like, I can't do it. They're the same. All creatures are the same. Uh, I'm going to put what's left of the incense uh, in between the bear's fingers and then stand up and do one final quick prayer. And then uh, I guess look at my surroundings and see where everybody else is going. It looks like Mortric is having his lights float slowly around the room, super eerily. And like formation, they're all moving like waves, like swish, swish. Is this the door you guys went through? Yes, they went through the northern door. Kaz's yeah, yeah. door, you went to go get the rest of the party. It's been like two minutes. They haven't Are showed up yet. yet. <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Oh, I'm going to say, Runa, I think we probably should go, but. That's a real nice thing. And then I'm just going to leave. 
and go out the door. Portrait walks away, me. snapping his fingers as the lights um, begin to follow him. Yeah, I'll follow the last light out. Man, the last light out should be the name of your second volume. No, it's the name of Runa's single. First hit single. It's literally just Runa's back towards the album cover with her wearing a trench coat. <laughs> Uh, Cazador, Rick Jack, suddenly lights begin to flare and your position is definitely 100% given away as Mortrix lights move towards you. Like, hey guys, what are we doing over here? <laughs> <laughs> You've been right. kind of looking at the hallway and seeing what you might figure out, Mortrix. You could learn a thing or two, perhaps. But do I want to? Yeah, I'll check out the hallway. They're like, ooh, flat tax, that's a terrible idea. Do you speak corners? dwarf it? <laughs> <laughs> How many corners do you think light would bounce around, like realistically? Rick Jack says you move around the next corner. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, you know, ray tracing can answer that question for us. Uh, the correct answer is a lot of F in corners. Uh, light likes to bounce around forever and ever to the ends of the universe. Yeah, it does. Uh, as you move, this area right here has a three foot tall brass uh, dwarf with a book in its hand with a whirlpool icon on it and a warhammer raised up towards the ceiling. Uh, you know, it looks like a small shrine. There's even a bowl in front of it. There's nothing in the bowl except for dust, uh, and the brass, of course, has been worn through years of non-repair uh, or upkeep, but it once was more impressive than it is now. All right, let me just take a quick look around. <clears throat> uh, investigation again. Oops, there we go. Normal, sorry. I'm just checking for any dangers. You take a look around. Put your hands on the walls, check the floor, look for strings or pressure plates. It looks safe. Okay. Then I'll motion for uh, Cazador to come take a look. I'd go forward. Wait, how far? It's right, right here. It's right here. Okay. This is the shrine. Okay. Indeed. It is a shrine. Yes. It's a shrine. Okay. Um. Hmm, I try and make something out of it, I guess. Because have I seen anything like this before? Yeah, so these are shrines to uh, the god of justice. Uh, you're not really sure who that is. Hey, your justice. It's going to come to life in two <laughs> You know, it's traditional to leave some coins. Of course, something like this is worth quite a bit of money. Like, you could, you could get it out of the floor and sell it for, you know, good salvage price. Uh, I leave a gold coin. Okay. Clink. <laughs> Clink. <clears throat> All right. All right, let's keep going. Rick Jacks, what do you think? Yep, let's keep going. Hey, guys, we're still back here. How close do you want us to follow you? Guys, I can't Just... see you. All right, I'll go back. Yeah, tell them to follow close enough so that their light hits you, but I just need to be beyond that. Yeah, you guys, just keep me within eyesight. All right, I'm going to just keep my token back there with Runa and just move up my light, and then I'll just be, like, one behind whatever this light is, wherever this light is for now. That way I'm not moving everything every time. And I can try helping you keep up with everybody. Rick Jacks, as you look out through that corridor, you hear something uh, cackle. <laughs> Kune vare no tish. Any language I recognize? Uh, do you speak undercommon? Uh huh. Yes. Uh, the creature is saying, So, something has finally come. Man, we could never sneak up on anything. Okay. So I'm going to wait for the group to catch up. Um, Kaz first. Just to As you're waiting, something horrendous comes around the corner oh. towards you, Rick Jacks. It's 
it's walking on two legs like a human, but it's like squat walking and using its forward hands to pull itself along. It looks kind of like this. It has a bright burning eye set in the center. Uh, just a single one and weird spikes coming down its back and says, So, you have been touched by a warlock. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Kaz, take point. <laughs> it takes a deep breath and looks at you. I need you to make a uh, charisma deception check real quick versus it, uh, Rick Jacks. Um, here it comes. Not a horrible roll. Yes. It takes a deep smell. Ah, hiding things are you, but I can see that you have an arcane focus. Are you a sorcerer or perhaps a wizard? For the rest of you, this conversation is like guttural and harsh and kind of horrifying. Okay, so, I mean, if it's going to talk, is there any way I can kind of look at, at Kaz and kind of give him a hint to, to let the other folks know there's something up here? I mean, as here? you turn around and look at Kaz, this thing moves solidly into your frame of view, Kazador, and, like, puts its arms out to prevent Rick Jacks from going any further and says, <laughs> Found you. Welcome to my abode. Welcome to the darkness. It slowly lets its hands down, but it continues squatting. Like, its butt is basically touching the ground with its knees bent. Hmm. And this is an undercommon? And at, yes. at, at squat height, is it about Rick Jack's size? Or? Oh, no. It's much shorter than Rick Jack's at this height. It At best, it might be three feet tall if it was at its full height. Okay. Oh, all right. Pretty small. I want to peek around the corner, like kind of crowding into Kaz's space and be like, do you guys ah, keep anything light. else? Light! Oh, Surface I, I can turn those off. But no, it's fine. Can My eye has else. adjusted. But do you speak under common? I don't. You have no idea what it's saying. Do you, you don't speak anything else? Just just the one language? Uh, Mortric, make a charisma uh, deception check. Its eye turns towards you and you feel something shift inside of yourself. Charisma deception? Yes. Oh my. Yep. It takes a deep breath and goes, there is much about that one I cannot see, filled with lies, deception. Does anyone know what he's saying? What did he say? Did he? Is he talking about me? It felt weird. I yeah, smell was... fear. Why are you all so afraid? You are in my house. You come bearing weapons. So we'll tell them we're, we're seeking passage through the dungeon. What's our, what's our quest here? Why are we in here? I'm drawing a blank. Dungeon. This is no dungeon. It is a shrine. The shrine, yeah. Do not speak foully of it. The shrine is an interesting place. I'm going to tap Kaz on the shoulder and be like, I don't know about that bear man, but I feel like this thing might actually be the thing you thought that other thing might have been. Do you understand what it's saying? I have no idea, but look at it. Look, I mean, I hate to judge a book by its cover and be all dwarfy, but that That's thing don't look good. Racist. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm still. I'm just looking at it, trying to figure out what it is. Can I make an arcana check or? Uh, let me see here. It might not be arcana. Okay. <laughs> you heard about uncritical role. S D N D. D N D B O. All right, let me see if any. Da, 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 da. Uh, ooh, for character knowledge about creatures. <laughs> Secret cults, inhabitants of the plains. All right, so it's a religion check. Okay. Hmm. A fourteen. 
You uh, recognize that this creature is definitely an aberration. You're not sure what it's called, but you've heard of, of something like it before. This is um, a cursed creature that was once a arcanist, like a wizard or a warlock, that sought divine understanding of becoming a lich, and in the process failed to complete the lichery, uh, mm. and was cursed to become this keeper of dark secrets, seeker of shadows, and... Uh, <clears throat> strange creature with unusual powers. We should be aware of this creature. But the, the yeah. important thing is, it retains no knowledge of its former life. When it when it failed to become a lich, it forgot everything before that moment. Uh, but you do know that they only lurk in places of deep magic, and also that they can be <clears throat> negotiated with to trade secrets and understanding. So I try and explain that to Rick Jax, I guess, in common, and he won't understand, I, I assume. So. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. What are you yeah. saying? And like, it crouches down even further and then like moves in a circle. Uh, I need you to make a charisma deception check real quick there, uh, Kazador, as it turns its eye towards you and you feel something like a wheel turning inside you. Okay, well, you got a 20 on the roll, so I just need to get a 20 as well, MBD. So, the creature goes, I do not understand it. It's dwarf. It's frustrating. Your party is so skilled at lying, Svernefblin. Why have you come here? You say you seek passage through the shrines of Laos. Uh, we heard... <clears throat> I'm not very good with deception. So we, we heard that the Zorn was, yeah, we, we heard the Zorn was terrorizing the shrine, so we had come looking for that. Yes, the Zorn. It has been changing the walls. It has been revealing hidden treasures and hiding things that were in plain sight. It has uh, been weird and unusual. And you say it's been revealing treasures? Indeed. Like what kind of treasures? Where Things are those? Things that were once hidden are now seen again. Look at the walls around you. This corridor, I had not seen its like in, ever since I was trapped here. Now, you can read along the walls the words of ancient dwarves, what their thought processes were. There are many such murals throughout the Shrine of Laos, depicting rings, spikes, and elephants, volcanoes, Dwarves at work, alcohol, recipes, graffiti depicting who has the largest dick. <laughs> there are such great works all over this place. Such interesting secrets that had lain bare, hidden within the walls until revealed by the Zorn. Can I see past this guy? Like, Yep. I mean, he's super small. He's smaller <clears throat> than you. So, I mean... Corridors, is it a corridor? It looks like it might be a corridor going north and south. Is that yep, true? Definitely. Okay. All right. Well, he sees you looking around and says, I do not seek to bar your passage. I only have come to negotiate. What I is know it that you many are things. For? I wish perhaps gold if you have any on hand, magic if you have any on hand, secrets. Your party is so full of deception. Secrets must be limitless within you. I will trade. And what kind of secrets are important to you? Because you said you're trapped down here. What, what secrets would I you want? I was trapped, but now no longer. I see. Once I was allowed to travel freely, but then a rock slide. And yet... And yet the Zorn freed me from my imprisonment. So I would take it that you're very familiar with this shrine. I am familiar with some parts. It changes on a daily basis. Okay, so I think I can speak on behalf of our party that we can provide you some gold if you show us around the shrine. Showing you around the shrine is dangerous. There is too much here that will try to kill you and I. If you give me 
some gold, I will tell you of a danger waiting for you ahead. That is my best offer. What? How much gold do you want? How much gold do you have? I have two pieces of gold. You can have one of them. No, not enough. A paltry sum. But what are you asking for then? More. Ask your friends how much gold they have. All right, so I'll ask, I'll let these guys know what the conversation's been going on so far and see what they think if they want to offer what, up. Is there like a general store down here that we haven't noticed? What does he want the gold for? That's a good point. So I'll turn to the creatures, like, why do you need the gold anyway? Because you're, you know, mm. what purpose down here? Once I am able to leave again, which is now, I can use the gold to buy things. You act as if I do not interact with civilization like the rest of you. You are heading into the deep darkness. There is much out here that your people has never seen. So I'm going to say, Rick Jacks, how about we try offering something other than gold anyway? We can offer him passage out of this mountain through the passageway to the south that we just passed away, that we passed by. Say pass one more time. <laughs> pass. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. I, I think that's fine. So we want to uh, offer to this creature if passage out of this dungeon or out of this uh, shrine is something that so he you're, desires. So you're basically saying we'll let you go past and go to that southern trap door? Yeah, I'm trying to lead him. I'm trying to offer to like lead him to that trap door, yeah. So okay. you can set it off. <laughs> well, I guess actually we don't want to set he it goes, off. He goes, very well. <laughs> If you know of an exit from this place that the Zorn has not moved, I will take such a advantage. Is there some secret that you would wish to know? Ah, yes, no, you had wanted to know the dangers that lie ahead. Tell me, what do you know of a creature called the Water Weird? Uh, I don't know anything. Kaz, do you know anything about a Water Weird? To my knowledge, I recognize it when he says it out loud. Uh, make an Arcana check. Arcana. Uh, Casador, you, yeah, you maybe not. Clue. Uh, yeah. The rest of you, I mean, Rena, do you have proficiency in Arcana? Uh, no. All right, so you still have a thirteen. All right, so Runa, you actually have the best idea of what a water weird is, without any formal training in this. Um. Mortric, you know water weird is a type of elemental that involves water. You're not sure what else goes on with it. Rune, yeah. you're aware that water wields are tied to water. Uh, they can't exist without it, and they're defenders of supplies of water. And it says, there is a water weird here to the north. It was used as a kind of uh, toilet. Well, good news. If it's an elemental, it can also get high. No. A water weird is immune to poison. Oh, man. It's tough luck for the water weird. It cannot use alcohol. It cannot in what sense? Or, sorry, I can't it understand it. It is immune to alcohol. I know it's difficult for a dwarf to understand. <laughs> <laughs> this particular water weird is polluted and evil. If approached unwisely, it will consume its victims, dragging it down into the toilet hole. Kaz, you're up. You, you're saying... <laughs> it, it was a joke. Okay. It was it was a deep gnome joke. That the creature across, so. uh, says, show me to the passageway now. Okay. I so you're going to show uh, it to the trap door? Uh, no, I want to pull out Mortrix map. All and, right. And I want to show him the exit back out to the empire oh interesting so you're gonna have it go past your cart yep all right uh it says good excellent we have an accord and it holds out a bony scaly hand towards Cazador. uh for uh, to, to handshake, right? handshake. Oh. <laughs> Probably shake your hand. Its this is like skin is, <laughs> is cold and clammy, far clammier than any living creature should be. Uh, and in Undercommon, it says, Odd bug and he struck. Know that you will break when the time comes. 
your cowardice would be legendary. Ooh. And then it lets go of your hand and moves past all of you, like, <laughs> and then Seen continues to walk while squatting s very strangely. Uh, as as it goes down the gone, corridor past you. I'm going to turn to Kaz and be like, really? Sleeping bear, you're like, no, kill that motherfucker. It's dangerous. That creepy ass thing, you're like, let's shake hands. Let's be best friends. <laughs> it's, all. it's sentient. At least there's a difference there. Look. Yeah, but it's evil sentient. Yeah, you're rationalizing. <laughs> all right. Dwarves. You taking north or south end, Runa? I'll check the other one. Oh, wait. Yeah. Well, Runa needs light, though. You gonna light a torch, Runa? How many torches yeah. do you have left, Runa? Uh, I have one more. Ooh, wow. Uh, I'd say let's save it. <laughs> You're like, let's save it. Runa's just like... <laughs> <laughs> light it up. Rich Axe, you charge down the southern corridor uh, and find find the walls here uh, include depictions of elephants and rings just everyday life um, and at other location these would be incredible works of craftsmanship but in the shrine of Laos in this sacred dwarven hold this is just wall art you know it just exists anywhere else this would be like masterpiece that someone would put on a stone tablet and host outside their home but for here it's just something people brush past every day hashtag dwarf life <laughs> runa as you charge up the northern corridor with your uh light you begin hearing the dripping sound of water mortric like stays close behind you in the process uh, you did s temporarily spot a door to the south when you uh went down the corridor I'm going to see what was there real quick, but I'll go back down to that door. Sure. Uh, you head back down to the door. On the far side of this door, you uh, can hear the crackling of a fire and uh, something speaking in... What languages do you speak? Common. You don't understand what they're saying. Uh, <clears throat> but you do hear, like, ho, 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 ho. Uh, at least two or three creatures uh, on the far side. Um, <clears throat> there's a smell like roasting meat coming from underneath the door. So this door is an iron door that again has swelled beyond the size of... Uh... Uh, I speak common and primordial. Okay, primordial is not going to help yeah. you, but that's pretty mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. Uh oh you speak the air ganasi or you speak the earth ganasis. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. <clears throat> um I'm gonna leave that alone for now. Okay. Rick Jacks, Casador, what are you guys doing? You're just standing in the corridor? I'm following Rick Jacks. Okay. Rectax, you begin approaching a uh, a door. Uh, Rune, you left that corridor unexplored and are instead returning to the rest of the party? Yeah. Okay. I don't want to get too far away from you them. Head back. Rickjax, do you think we should check out what the uh, creature was talking about, or do you want to look at this door? I think this door, if I have a good sense of direction is in the same direction as the trapped door. It leads leads out to where the, the trap door leads out. So this might be a, a place of egress, or I guess going down to Blindstone. I'm not really sure at this point. It's pretty labyrinthine. You're uh, muted, uh, Rick Jax. I was just going to say my directional sense Tells me this door leads south. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but yeah, let's um, let's wait for the group. The group I catches up Runa as you say out. that. Runa comes around the corner with a torch. Oh, she's got a torch. Okay. All right. So um, yeah, is the door locked? I'll do an it. It is an unlocked store door, stone door. You're doing a close inspection. Roll investigation. You 
touch that door all over. You're pretty sure it's safe. Yeah, okay. Let's open it. The door creaks open. Inside is a cavernous room. All right, so you can see inside this room that there are uh, stone desks interspersed. There seem to be two in every five foot square uh, with stone chairs. Everything is like furniture built into the ground. Like, um, what's that house, Falling Water by Frank Lloyd Wright or whatever? All the furniture is built into this area. Uh, all of it faces towards where you are coming from. Like they look like desks? Yes. Uh, you know, like, like school desks, right? Like a desk that uh, made out of stone, rises from the ground, curves over, and then it has an internal area that you can reach into. Uh, as you step in, Rick Jacks, there's a chalkboard behind you. built in. It's literally just like a black slate, and you can see that there's still several pieces of untouched chalk there. Okay. All right, so I definitely want to wait for the group to, to regroup in this room, and then we can kind of decide our next course of action. Yeah, so as you wait for everybody, you do a quick calculation. I mean, there could be dozens to hundreds of students that would have been facilitated in this room at any one time. I'm not going to leave Runa. She has the light. I believe I recognize this kind of room. I mean, we had something similar back in my hold in Carandine, and it was for schooling children. I'm like, Bleh, I don't miss this at all. Yeah, because she was giving me nightmares. Worst room in the mine, labyrinth, dungeon, whatever we're in. Did you say that your home's name was Karen Dean? Uh, yeah. Writing that down real quick. That's Clan White Knuckles Clan Hold. Yeah, I, uh, look at that. No, no, I got it. I got it, brother. <laughs> I put I put it in the thing in the the, the Google Doc. But yeah, well, yeah, let me tell you something, man. Google that... Doc. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty rough. Yeah. Really. <laughs> well, the thing is, you switched perspective. You started with I, I, and then you were like Casador, and then you said he, and I was like, what is happening? Yeah, yeah, I was just sort of free free. No slide. one, no one let this man ever write a comic, right? Don't let him typeset anything. <laughs> Hey, 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 hey. You yeah. can draw it. I've written, I've written a few. So, Casador, but... as you're looking th through <laughs> these desks, you can see that many of the desks still have books in, in them, uh, like journals. Okay. Uh, I've flipped through some of the books. Yeah, so each of these desks has a history book. Uh, for, And everything's in Dwarven, of course. Uh, the history of Clan Laos. Uh, and also there's a journal at every desk. Now, the, the history books are all the same, but the journals are all different. Um... There are also like small change. Some of the desks have a few coppers in them. Some have like small gemstones. Uh, it, it feels very personal to be in this room, right? You're not just looking through a dungeon. This is people lived here, right? I try and recall back to the hallways. Was there any kind of records of history? I mean, they had a full homeowners agreement along the walls and i there was no written history but there was the depictions of historical events right uh, such okay. as laos's rise rich x uh what do you what are you doing with the 16 you're just investigating the room in general yep yep general walk around okay general walk around uh of course in the northeast corner there's a archway uh doesn't look like it was ever meant to accommodate a door so no door there uh there is a um stone door uh and the middle north door i need you to make a dexterity save because as you're investigating it you like get up and you're like oh and then you hear a clicking noise and you're like uh-oh uh-oh deck save deck save deck save here it comes natural one natural one natural one you're good uh okay. you leap back and as you're like touching the door a needle comes out from the the handle and you can see it flicks off a green poison uh it definitely would have been super bad if you were still holding that handle when that happened jesus uh, christ Cass! what kind of people booby trap a classroom what is wrong with you people 
people with a mind for defense and people who know i mean i guess they're now dead so what can i say about that uh, every day every day you continue to just shock and appall me so, uh, i'll tell the group i go hey be be careful on those other doors because i was looking for stuff and that was still hidden so it was, it was well crafted yeah, right? i mean some of the school children might have escaped with their lives <laughs> so there's also a, uh, a stone door here, a stone door over here, and a iron door down here. As you look around. I'm going to go through the desks and the journals that are in there. I know I can't read them, but I'm just kind of like looking at how like the children who want to learn here. Kinda so several of the journals are entirely text-based, but most of them have some form of drawing in them uh there's a lot of engineering design sketching uh showing like it will one page will show a finished warhammer and the opposite side will show all of the different parts and how they fit together uh it's incredibly detailed there are some doodles uh you find one journal that makes it clear that this not only was this kid an artist but also they were not paying attention in class. Uh, you have a very good idea of what the teacher looked like uh, with horns, uh, as a baboon, uh, being stabbed in the back. It's just very detailed depictions of the teacher and several classmates as well. Yeah, that makes her smile. Should probably take that journal and a couple of the journals and maybe have some sketches of what. Okay, write down that you have three journals, uh, okay. three journals from the Shrine of Leos. Cazador. Yes. As a grudge bearer, mm -hmm. you know that this room is filled with grudges. Each one of these people needs to be avenged. <laughs> you can feel it. You you breathe it. Do I have Every any sense of what happened to them? I scour no. the, the history books. I mean, the history books here are the history of the clan Laos, right? It, it tells yeah. you about how Laos was but a common dwarf with no nobility to him. You know, the first page, is you open up, it's like a storybook is the first page. How Laos uh, worked hard every day and paid respect to his elders and, uh, you know, paid his taxes on time and uh, ate f uh, with, at, with 20 chews and drank only a reasonable amount of alcohol but one day as he was working hard he reached into the stone and pulled out the warhammer that was given to him by the earth mother and with it he began to lay about his foes defending the shrine or defending the clan at all odds and thus became the leader of the clan and gathered about him great warriors and then it's then is the um the index the the, the like after this fairy tale part, it's like part one, 721 BC. Mm -hmm. You know, it looks like this history book covers about a thousand years of history. So I add that to my knapsack. Okay. Yeah, sure. And write down that you have one history of the Shrine of Laos. Yep. Probably 100% full of dwarven propaganda. Yep. I love it. <laughs> Some light reading. Uh, so it should be noted that as a grudge bearer, if you discover anyone in this book that has offended the clan and that offense has not been answered, you may feel a unquenchable need to answer that offense before you die. Okay. That sounds, that sounds fair. Um, that sounds pretty dwarven -y. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds all Kaz. <laughs> Um, but I haven't seen any of that so far in my skimmings. I mean, I'll, I'll keep I'll keep this at my nap uh, like side. When we'll I'm talk about it next time you have a long rest, if you yeah, want to sit exactly. down and read it. Uh... Yeah. In the meantime, I try to figure out if there's any evidence of conflict in this room. Just on a quick glance, there's no sword scratches. There's no dead bodies. No skeletons. But it's all clean. It is, it's not clean. Uh, you know, there's a light layer of dust everywhere. You know that the creature that you saw came from this direction? 
yes. that, that small thing you spoke with had come from this direction. Uh, mm -hmm. Hard to tell, you know, where it's going and where where exactly it came from, but it definitely almost certainly came from this room at some point. Mm -hmm. I wish we had asked him more questions about this room, but it's too late now. He's gone. So I'm going to take a look. I mean, he's probably going to be like, man, free cart. <laughs> I mean, it's a little like guy like that can pull a cart i'll point that out look at this hater right here he's like oh yeah arthur i don't think you can and i'm like oh you want to you want to check that thing's strength score you might right. be surprised i feel like kaz thinks he knows a lot <laughs> uh kaz you come to that that corridor and you notice that this is the stuck iron door that leads to the trap room. You're looking okay. at it from the other side. Yeah. It's swelling in its frame. Mm -hmm. Man, what is it with the doors in this place? Why are what they all like this? What do you mean? Like, this is what, door number six that's been swollen in its frame? Not to mention, guys, I don't want to freak anyone out, but I think we've offended some sort of like bear god. Because back in Apple Valley, zombie bear, and then I think there was like a road bear. Am I making that up? I feel like there was a road bear. I think you're making now, that up. Here you are making that now, up. Dude. Here we are in another place. That was that was a minotaur. Oh, it was a road minotaur. <laughs> yeah. All right. But you know what? I bet that's only because we turned left at the fork. All right, road bear, guaranteed. <sighs> I hate to not end on a cliffhanger, but this actually is a good point to stop while you guys are taking a break in the room and just accepting the history around you. And You know, mm -hmm. the camera probably does a slow pan looking over all of your faces as Runa flips through a journal and Mortric fast talks with Cazador, who's, you know, got a far start, distant like, look. A crazy man page in my, in one of my papers where like, I'm going to get some red yarn and like start drawing connections just between like bears and conspiracies. <laughs> <laughs> Aliens. <laughs> uh, well, right, so let's shut all the doors and oh, we're not, saying. we're just, okay. Lock it up for the night. Yep. Uh, oops. No, that's correct. You all get 675 experience points. Jeez. Damn. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, what was that? 665? 675. 675. Thank you, Zorn. I mean, you overcame some pretty big challenges. You killed a polar bear, killed a Zorn. You you bypassed an encounter with a Nothic. What are we at experience wise? It'd be 29, 22. No, it should be more than that. Should be twenty seven fifty four plus the six seventy five. Uh, I yeah exactly. So it's three three thousand four hundred and forty seven. Wait what? Oh wait, I know what I was doing wrong. Here. Type it into the thing. Thirty four sixty seven. You guys are almost halfway to the next level. Thirty four forty seven. Okay, we're all great with yeah, math. Five is sixty five hundred. Oh, is that where it is? Okay. No, oh, chat okay. knew that, that that was a no thick. Interesting. They know what's up. Chat's pretty smart. Chat knows what's up. I mean, chat doesn't always know what's yeah, up. That's where it's at. Sometimes yeah, they're like, been... I okay. like watching AP. Oh, dick pinkings are timeless. Yeah. So, like, can I look for some sort of, like small stone tool and I want to carve another dick into one of these desks? Just I just want to be super clear. You're doing that while Cazador is watching? Yeah, and I. He's like reminiscing. I'm like, Kaz, look at all the other dicks on these desks, right? Someone has to keep this tradition alive. No, no, those were dwarven, dwarven children carving those dicks. You're just a. Uh, You're just a well, what? Just a what? Hand just a what, Kaz? I'm gonna hand 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 to uh, a vandal. <laughs> Carve a dick. Do a vandal is. Oh, that's are. a good sideways shift, but we know what yeah. you meant. <laughs> we know what you meant. Uh, actually, no. I was trying to think of the word for like if you spray paint. Graffiti. 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 Right. Vandalism. Vandal. Yeah, that's why that's why I went with vandalism. A tagger. He's a tagger. A tagger. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Double check where it's He's a tagger. Seven, right? Excuse Sorry, I, I typed it into the thing. All right. Yeah. 
What did you guys think I was going to say? <laughs> oh, you know, your usual cast About stuff. human? Yeah. Like just a human or something? Yeah. Like what else? <laughs> yep, everybody thought you were going to say just a human. <laughs> just just a racist thing. Because you're racist. I mean, he is just a human. <laughs> <laughs> he says under his breath. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he is just a human. Guys, Dwarven Children's are obviously better. <laughs> this was a episode. We've got our first possible collaborative piece where, uh, I mean, I don't, I'm not part of this coordination, but I assume you'll all send it to each other and work on it. I can't wait to see what it turns out like. Uh, I love Mortric getting high and hallucinating. <laughs> uh, <laughs> especially oh, yeah, love that for some reason you've drawn him shirtless in this, even though he still had his clothes <laughs> on at the time. No, I think he's naked all the time now. <laughs> Is Rena smelling the fur? Ah, nice. nice. Oh, boy. Um, Mortric on watch. <laughs> Kaz going for the coin. That's good dwarven gold. <laughs> <laughs> A fellow with two weapons, really? Because, uh... Rick Jack said that like three seconds after I finished this picture. I thought, that is perfect. Oh, no. <laughs> Hopefully the second weapon is the sensor bar. Right. And then our, our Zeno? Zeno? Zorn. X-O-R-N. Yeah, there we go. Guys, if you're the audience, even if it's on YouTube, give a hand from a comicer here. Even in the past, we of the present can feel your future affections <laughs> flowing to the past for us. <laughs> and let it be known, I was not the one that killed the defenseless animal this time. You didn't even attack it. I did not. You weren't even aware. Shit anytime this game. I didn't attack yeah. anybody. So I, now Runa or Rick Jacks have to, has to attack the next uh, natural creature. <laughs> I think it's going to be yeah. really tough to get Runa to do that, but I'm, I'll do my best to bait her into it. <laughs> It has to be asleep. Both of them have been asleep. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Business. <laughs> A phobia of sleeping natural creatures. There. I don't think that's a thing. <laughs> nope. Ladies and gentlemen, it is. thank you for joining us. Of course. Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, AP Gaming Reel. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow night for more 5e. And if you really like watching Cottontailed, stick around on Thursday where uh, the Battletech gang is undertaking the hardest challenge they've ever fought. They are, for the first time ever, at a disadvantage points-wise in the game. And we're also having the most proficient enemy we've ever had come run the opposite side of the table. So I'll be on the player side, and someone else who's really good at the game is going to be playing the bad guys. For me, like Sid Highwind's Sid Highwind's theme is playing for this battle. Like, <laughs> Sid Highwind, look yeah. at this Final Fantasy VII loving motherfucker. Ow. That shit's coming to the Switch too. Yep. Is I mean, I've got it, it for PlayStation. I got it for the PC. I don't know why I wouldn't get it for the Switch. Ten and Ten Two are also on the Switch. Well, Ten is a thing. Ten Two. Mm. That's not. <laughs> I'm just letting you know. It's I've 12? never, I've never played it. It didn't seem like my style. You know, dress up and dance just wasn't working for me. Yeah, I definitely played it, and I definitely regret it. I mean, a lot of people enjoyed it. Just, I was not one of those people. Yeah, it just wasn't. Didn't seem like it was for me. I mean, ten maybe now amazing, that I'm anime is F, though. And I love ten. I mean, ten is really good. Mm. Mm. Look at this hater <laughs> really, right Cass? here. Really? <laughs> Get out of here. I'm Connor I Hughes. I'd like to give you my TED talk about why Thor Ragnarok is the worst Marvel movie of all time. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's the worst. I mean, geez. Let's not, let's I wouldn't not... say it's the worst. Ant Man exists. <laughs> <laughs> I slept I slept uh, midway through Ant Man, so what can I say? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh. But, I mean, what, the half that I did see was enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> Connor, let's start with your outro. <laughs> okay. But I'm not hating on uh, Thor Ragnarok. Mm -hmm. uh, I often stream on Twitch and make some drawings. Um, yeah, I'll be back on soon. Uh, working on, I guess, more character sketches, things like that. We're sort of wrapping up this volume. Um, 
yeah, that's that's where I'm at. I'll be on, you know, I'm at twitch.tv slash Connor Hughes. Thanks for checking me out. Thanks, everyone, that um, backed the Kickstarter. Very much appreciate it. Question. Will yes. you be drawing dead bears? Uh, <laughs> you know what's funny? In, in college, we had a thing where oh, like, all, all my stories did involve bears of some kind or another. <laughs> so it was, a, like, it was a running joke. And then everyone in the whole grade uh, or class or whatever, they we all had to do one comic <laughs> featuring a bear. One bear. But these weren't dead bears. This was mainly like a ma the mauling type bear, and you know, I liked bear winning. So pre pre dead bears, yeah, bears yeah. you hadn't killed yet. Like like somewhere up in the some kind of tundra situation, and there's some kind of desperate uh, Eskimo type figure, right? Like uh, a fiend like Eskimo, a fiend, fiend Eskimo fiend controlling Eskimo. The, the Antarctic yeah. bears. <laughs> no, no, the, the, fiend, the, the Eskimo was fighting the bear. You know? Dance uh, bears, dance to my mind control. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, are still has sneaking suspicions about that bear. It doesn't matter what anyone says. I mean, he was about to start piecing through the skull, and um, I'm just saying, when a bear Spartan kicks you off a cliff, I'm not going to shed a tear. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Guys won't doesn't shed, shed any tears. So, but yeah. Um, thanks, uh, to you guys and Bearded. What's up with you? What are you doing this week? Uh, what am I doing? I'm fixing up the new apartment because that's all of my time. But uh, when I'm not doing that, I'll be drawing. I'll be doing some commission work, doing some comic work. I still need to color that one comic and finish drawing the other one. So I'm staying busy. How about you, Mick? You streaming? Um, I I am streaming. Uh, I will be streaming tomorrow, working on a two-page spread in Hollow. My Washington Irving uh, HP Lovecraft mashup. And if you're interested in seeing anything I've already drawn for that, a lot of it's on Instagram at McComicer. And Planet Chaos, I hear you have some big news coming up soon. What is that? Uh, it's the same teasing uh, announcement I give you guys every week. So doing the game design. But I actually thought of some other news. Now, I'm on Twitch, so Planet Chaos, uh, Chaos with the K, Planet Chaos Art on Twitch. And then um, I, this weekend sometime, I'm going to try to have sort of a game night because I actually got past, you know how they, Twitch has that level that you have to earn more than $100 before they even pay you out anything? Yep. Yeah, yeah so I actually got past that mark. Oh, so we're going to nice. do... We're doing a, a pizza party where everyone brings your own pizza and we're going to do some games online. So I'm going to get some of the uh, Jackbox games. And um, Sick. yeah, and we're going to do that. We're going to do that. So we're going to have a party this weekend. Sick. Nice. I love pizza parties. Yeah. Oh. So for anyone interested, just keep track of uh, in Discord. Um, I have a channel. I think it's just called announcements. It's called news. So chaos news, and I will uh, I'll, I'll keep you up to date. It's going to be Friday or Saturday, it looks like. So, Sweet. and other than that, I will be streaming much more often. So I'm going to change my schedule around and get more commitments. And I will be streaming tonight in about an hour. Yeah. Yep. I think I was the last one, right? Yep. Yep. AP, all to you. So we'll be back next week where we'll be playing Mobile Frame Zero Firebrands. I'm going to say something like everyone should take a brief, brief look over the rules so that they understand what Bantrafill is and uh, Crystalline Bantrafill. Probably no one will do that. Uh, but fortunately, it's the kind of game that we could play for maybe an hour and a half. We could play for up to four hours. What's interesting about the game is that it ends when someone says, okay, we're done. <laughs> what? So it never ends. Well, I mean, at some point, I'll just be like, hey, guys, it's been four hours. We're done. <laughs> you, you can't call it. We got to call it. So you do one rotation through everybody. And then at any point, if anyone says we're done, then you do one final rotation where you wrap up the story and that's it. Huh. Uh, so it could be, you know, one hour. It could be four. We'll find out. Can you, can you type that name of the game in uh, one of the I think Discord I rooms? He put, in, out, he put uh, this stuff in the POW. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I didn't route. pin it, but he I pinned will... it in POW. I I pinned didn't pin it in POW. POW. No one pinned it for me, but I will get it for you so that it can be pinned there again. Uh -oh. Someone okay. should pin it in POW. Mobile frame zero firebrands. No it's only like twenty pages, so it should be a pretty quick read. Boom! There you go. So we'll be back with that next week. 
I don't know about the week after. Like, there's some interesting options. I was thinking maybe Mouse Guard, but that's a really, that's a huge commitment to get new players into. Since it's, uh, I don't, I don't know what, what about I, the one where we pit each other against each other, pol- politically and stuff? Oh, diplomacy it's requires diplomacy. requires seven players, and uh, Damn it. typically, so, I, mean, it's, I definitely don't want to miss out on diplomacy. It's better played over like eight to ten hours, or if you're playing, um, yeah. if you're playing on the internet, you do one turn a day every twenty four hours, and if you miss your turn, your turn is just nothing happens. Made RPG cotton. These people are new to the yes. RPG scene. We don't need to Made scare them RPG. away. Made RPG. Really? Yeah. What do you know about Made RPG? There are no Nothing. dead bears. <laughs> you do not know anything Allegedly. about Made RPG. <laughs> Randomly summoning bears is part of the ritual process of that game. <laughs> I'd be down for some mouse guard just to be able to draw some red wall type creatures. Uh, I got to warn you, it's a yep. commitment. It's probably going to take two or three hours just to make your character. Oh, yeah. No, I mean... No, oh, there you are. Oh. See, there it is. You're like, one time and I have okay. to spend three hours making a character? No, thanks. But, How many I mean, hours does it take to make a maid? Is that is that fun for people uh, to watch? Making a maid takes, ah, like, ten minutes or less? Boom, Connor. Maid RPG. It, so oh, when no. you make a maid, it involves rolling D6s. It's complete randomness. Good. You don't get to. You don't get any character choice picks. You just make random rolls and see where you show up on the chart. That yeah. sounds amazing. I mean, I'm down. Connor, are you saying no? You're not down with it? No, I'm saying. I'm saying yeah. I'm saying. Shep, uh, you're you down know, with down playing to, maids. Yeah. Just down to be to clear, all. maid RPG is about. I will be playing the master of a mansion of some kind. Probably this one will be set in a fantasy setting, and you will be the maids attempting to win my favor. Uh, the person who ends up with the most hearts towards me wins at the end. I, yes. I'm, I'm game for it. I'm wow, for it. I can't believe you all are laughing and you're in. What, very well. Whatever you guys want. In two hey. weeks, we shall play Maid RPG. Cotton, you should have been scared. Your first time was terrible. Look, Cotton Tailed is currently this channel's reigning champion of Maid RPG. She has won every single time. Up. Probably is. Hey, uh, I want to bring something up too. Uh, you know that squad mode for Twitch? Yes. Oh, is that is that active for it's, everyone yet? No, it's, no, it's only, only for partners. For partnered streamers. Oh, just partnered. Okay. Yep. Sorry, it's not for us yet. It's on okay. Mixer though. For some reason, we all five of us randomly wanted to switch to Mixer. No. no. Boy, I'm already on Mixer. Mi- mix, mix, mix down. He loves Mixer. Yeah, yeah, I like Mixer. Mixer is yeah. like Twitch, but with a smaller you know viewership. You know how easy and... it is to stream on Mixer? Like, it's I assume it's just as good as it is on Twitch. It's more like Grinder. You don't even have to, like, <laughs> I don't have to open up OBS or Streamlabs or anything. I have no and idea how Mixer really works, apparently. So, like, there's no, you know, there's no stress. It's so just... You don't so, have to do any of those things because no one actually watches. <laughs> exactly. So is uh, so is Cotton gonna play with us so we can take her title away? Oh, uh, you wanna you wanna challenge Cotton to join us in two weeks for Maid RPG? <laughs> that's a, it out I there. gotta tell you, that's a dangerous move. Out. You're, you're I don't looking, think Cotton can back out at this point. I hope that you like losing. Uh, Cotton <laughs> is basically un, unbeatable. Down. Hey Connor, do you have I, a full body shot of Kaz? I do. So you're saying there's a chance. All right. Well, let's not force her to answer immediately right so, now. <laughs> yeah. Like, what, do we do we play like French maids? I mean, he kind of made you. I old. will get you the maid RPG rule book for you to flip through. Uh, yeah. Let me. A I, I will. Maid. I will read some of the options that you can make. Okay. They the will shed. be unusual. What is with this rhyming right now with the word made? <laughs> I just made that up. Oh, Pretty no. Easy. Just no. Please stop. We better back out before everyone gets played. Okay, made RPG. <laughs> I'm opening it up here. Maybe. That was a real stretch. I hope you yeah. are. <laughs> I hope you are ashamed of that one. Yeah, that's that's. Yeah. All right. So I wish there were some pretty. At least I didn't kill a bear. Over. I'm proud of that bear kill. I did it all by myself. Oh, please stop. <clears throat> There's nothing wrong with killing some bears. Yes, there is. There's a ton of problems with killing bears. It's literally all the problems. Did you put a message coming? Yeah. All right, I'll tell you what. Here is here is one made from my last made RPG game. Uh, it the they were a bunny 
who could shift into human form. Yes. All right. You're following me so far. Yep. Uh, yep. Her second power beyond shifting into human form was that she also could become a male vampire in his 30s who had his own character sheet that had to be managed. So she had two characters at the same time that were one person and had sunlight weakness as a vampire. <laughs> I'm liking this already. Uh, you know, sometimes you might end up being a cat or actually a guy or secretly the devil. Uh, you might have criminal tendencies. You're not turning me off to this. When your stress level gets too high, you start a timer. And as that timer counts down, you have to do whatever your stress trigger is. For some people, it might be gambling. For others, it might be berating other people. Until Connor. your physical timer runs out, <laughs> you must continue doing that thing that is your stress trigger if you want to take any actions in the game. So it's yeah, it sounds like great. Darkest Dungeons there with the stress. Uh, yes, it is kind of like Darkest Dungeons if Darkest <laughs> Dungeons was about maids. Yeah, and okay. not about death. Yes, I mean, Cotton stress trigger <laughs> once was cocaine. doing cocaine. Yep. <laughs> This game sounds amazing. It is. You will play it once, and you will probably never play it again. Uh, I'm down. You say amazing. We have different meanings of that word. <laughs> All it's right. only as fun as you make it. Any other business before we uh, depart this fair night? Very well, then. I declare <laughs> us dismissed. Have a good night, cast, and have a good night, audience. Good night, everyone. Thanks, AP. Yeah, thank you, AP. Yeah. Fiery swoosh. Swoosh.